Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and I have a confession to make. I absolutely love delay feedback loops. And in this video, I want to show you a trick I like to use to draw out rhythmic or melodic elements. You can even use this on vocals for some really cool, repetitive, uh, creative effects. So first, let me show you the effect that I'm going to create. And then I'll, sh I'll start from scratch and reconstruct the effect and add in some other musical elements. So in this track, I have these two lead tracks. They're playing together in harmony. And then I have both of these going over into a track stack. And on this track stack, I have a tape delay plugin. And I've automated the level of the feedback on the delay. I've also used an EQ here to just automate like a filter here. So on these tracks, essentially, they're starting with a lot of the high end uh, cut out. And then by the end, more and more of the high end comes back in. So it's just giving more and more high frequency emphasis throughout the musical example. So let me just play the example and then I'll show you how to recreate this. And there you go, you can see that that delay feedback loop carries on until I set the playhead back to where the feedback drops down to zero. And actually, it's actually not zero, it's you really need the feedback to be under 100% and the delay will eventually stop, it'll eventually decay down to nothing. But if the feedback is higher than 100%, that delay is just gonna continue on and on and on and on. And the higher the feedback amount, the more of that feedback loop you're going to get. And eventually it will just degenerate into noise. So what is feedback? Well, feedback determines the number of delays you get, the, the amount of uh, signal that's fed back into the delay unit to continue on the delay. In terms of, you know, like a, a circuit uh, circuitry, it's like feeding the output of a device back into the input of the device. So just uh, for sake of demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the automation here. And now I just have a standard half note delay with a bit of filtering. Um, with the feedback at zero, you're just gonna hear the delay once on each one of these little melodic ideas here. So the more you push up the feedback, the more repetitions you will get in the delay. Yeah, and that's the uh, degenerating into noise I was talking about. If you really push this really far above 100% and leave it there, it's not going to sound great. So you have to be really careful about controlling the position of the feedback when you create these types of effects, which is why I recommend writing it in as automation and also including a drop da uh, back down to zero at some point in the automation. So let's say throughout this whole section here, I want to create those little echoes in between each of these little phrases, just like I was doing there. And then I want it to just stay like slightly above 100 uh, until I get to a certain point over here where we jump into a completely different section of the song. I could write the automation in manually, or I could use real-time automation. 
uh, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn latch mode on on this track stack. And I'm just going to press play and I'm going to move the feedback knob up and down. And I'm going to try to go a little bit higher each time and eventually get up to about 105, 106. And then I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so basically what we do is we come right back into the main melody at bar, I think it's, yeah, like the second beat of bar 68 here. So right where that hits is where I want the delay to drop back down to nothing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to automate that in manually, just like so. Okay, and by the way, you heard probably a spot there where the volume completely drops out on some of these instruments. That'll make uh, more sense in just uh, just a bit here. So that's how you can automate in the effect. I'm going to go ahead and just put this back on read mode, and I can close out the delay. Now, maybe I don't want this effect to just carry on and on and on and on. Maybe I want it to fade out and then fade back in. It just so happens in this track I'm working on, there's a bit of like a piano solo and a violin layer up here. I'm going to go ahead and pull those in, and let's listen to that effect with uh, the piano solo in and let's see how well that, that fits. So yeah, that's just carrying on and on. It's, it's burying the piano. So what I may choose to do here instead is automate the volume down for a while. Automating the volume down doesn't affect the amount of that delay feedback loop going on in the background. So I can fade it down during the piano solo, then bring it back up during that transitional section where I want it back in there. So this is the track stack that the leads are going into. So I could just do something like this, where I automate this down for several bars just like that. And then when we get to the tail end of the uh, keyboard solo, the piano solo, we can ramp it back up. So let's see what that sounds like. I'm gonna start, um, actually I'm gonna start a little further back because there are some instrumental melodies here in the piano that tie into this lead. So this is essentially the entire uh, musical example now. <laughs> So here the delay feedback loop is being used not just as a way to carry on this musical idea, it's also being used as a way to build tension into the next section of the song and it, it, it sort of functions as a transitional effect as well, although I probably wanna pull that down uh, just a touch. 
So that is how you can use delay feedback loops in a creative way. Obviously, there are a ton of different ways uh, you can implement this, but I absolutely love automating the feedback in delay plugins. And this isn't just the tape delay in Logic. Virtually every delay plugin will have a feedback knob that controls the amount of delay, how long the delay lasts for. And again, when you push this above 100%, it creates a feedback loop. It creates uh, an additive or positive feedback loop where you're getting more out of the unit than you're, than you're putting in. Um, so this can be used for some really, uh, really cool and really creative effects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.